This week on the prison bus, I got back to working with wood. And at the end of the video, I'll show you how I also pulled out most of the windows on the bus, finally getting them to open and close. And then I reinstalled them all. I've liked all the jobs on the bus in different ways, but I gotta say that I look forward to working with wood the most. In the cavity of the prison bus, wood meets steel in ways that call for curves and notches and tweaks of all kinds. I started by framing out the shower stall. This was to be able to dial in the location of the shower pan and then drill the shower's drain hole in exactly the right place. I didn't want to botch that hole. While I place the shower controls on one wall, I put the shower head up high on the side just to raise it up a bit more. And who knew that Hardy Backerboard was named after James Hardy? I put this backerboard up in the shower stall, having used it a few times before. I guess I always think that the grid on the board is going to be helpful when tiling, but the deal is that it gets covered over by the tile cement so it becomes completely invisible, and yet I keep using the same board. I'm not sure how you do this, but to mark things behind a backer board or piece of drywall, in order to be able to cut out the holes, I use a marking pen or chalk. Here I tried out a goopy marking pen that I got from Sharpie, and that worked out really well.
Now, it's way too early to be installing a shower curtain rod in here, but someone sent me this rod just to check out, so I screwed it up in place to see if it would work in the bus. It fit well, but it's a bit chintzy in terms of like the metal and the plasticky feeling, so I'm not sure if I'm going to use it in the end. But thanks for the rod, and we'll have to see in the end. Brilliantly, I forgot to drill out the hole for the shower head on this piece of board here and didn't even realize it till looking through the video. So that's something to go back and fix. Okay, so the windows. I think I've mentioned before that all but five of the gajillion prison bus windows have never been able to open and shut. To remove the windows on your prison bus, first remove the 12 foot long sheet metal that's holding them in place. Then remove several screws along the sides of each window and then gently pry at the windows and then pry a little bit less gently and finally they'll budge free. I remove the tiny screws holding each window shut, clean them all up a bit and then resealed each opening and window before reinstalling them. In the middle of this window job, I posted this picture to Instagram, joking about having a bunch of extra help that day, and it got me a few laughs and just kind of gave me something to think about while I did this pretty monotonous window job. And I did the same thing to the windows on the other side of the bus, which I'm not going to show you because it's exactly the same as what you just saw. But what is amusing, however, is that I struggled for a good long time trying to put those 12 foot long metal sheets back in place. Get help for this part of the job if you can. Trying to solo it, I started by using my big old magnet to hold up one end of the metal. There's a groove at the top of the sheets that needs to slide into the ceiling metal. And every time I got one section of the groove in place, it would fall apart somewhere else. I even switched sides of the bus, thinking the other side would be easier for some reason. And exhausted and beaten, it finally dawned on me, clamps. The solution is always clamps. Now that the windows can open and close, I had no trouble setting up a row of clamps to support the sheets of metal while I futzed with them and pried on them and finally got them in place. That worked out great and I got the whole bus put back together. In the next video, I build out the long walls on each side of the bus and do a few more interior things. You guys are great and even put up with my cheesy Halloween video. Big thanks for watching, liking, sharing, and subscribing.